Chairman Miller, uh, Ranking Member McKeon, and other members of the committee, I appreciate the opportunity to testify today on the issue of the adequacy of penalties for violations of the Occupational Safety and Health Act. Today is Workers' Memorial Day, a day the unions and others here and around the globe remember those who have been killed, injured, and diseased on the job. It also marks the 39th anniversary of when the OSHA Act went into effect. While progress has been made since the Act was passed, the toll of workplace injuries, illnesses, and fatalities is still enormous. In 2007, 5,657 workers died on the job. That's an average of 15 workers every day. Nearly four decades after the OSHA law was passed, the job safety law remains essentially the same today as when it was enacted in 1970. Enforcement is weak and OSHA penalties remain low, particularly when compared with other safety environmental laws, all of which have been updated by the Congress since they were first enacted. Uh, yesterday, the AFL-CIO released its annual report on job safety in conjunction with Workers' Memorial Day. Our analysis found that the average penalty for a serious violation of the OSHA Act nationwide is about $900. In some states, particularly the state plan states, the penalties are much lower. For example, in South Carolina, the average penalty for a serious violation was just $331. Even in cases involving workers' deaths, OSHA enforcement is weak and penalties are low. Uh, on average, nationally last year, the penalty for worker fatalities was just, the average penalty was just about $11,000. But this average includes high penalty cases and doesn't represent the penalties in typical cases. Uh, and moreover, it doesn't reflect the final penalties after cases are settled. Last year, the Senate Labor Committee conducted an in-depth investigation of enforcement and uh, penalties and fatality cases. And what they found in the typical case, the median penalty uh, that was issued and then was settled out was $3,700. And so what we heard from, uh, uh, from Becky Foster about the OSHA citations and penalty in her case are typical of what happens in thousands of fatality investigations for job uh, fatalities in this country. Clearly, this type of penalty provides no deterrent to employers to prevent future violations of the law and to prevent deaths and injuries. So why are the penalties so low? The problems are largely systemic, and they start with the OSHA law itself. Under the OSHA Act, the maximum penalty for a serious violation and that's the most common violation associated with fatality cases, the maximum penalty is $7,000. But the maximums are rarely assessed. And throughout its history, OSHA's procedures for considering the factors of employer size and gravity and history end up and result in penalties that are well below uh, these maximums. As I said, for serious violations, the act says you start at $7,000. But the OSHA formula says, no, you start at $5,000 and you go down from there. And so, as I said, at the end of the day, what we have, even in fatality cases, are penalties that are in the range of $3,000 to $4,000 for cases of worker deaths. And um, the end result of this process and the act and uh, penalty procedures is that we end up with serious violations that put workers in danger, that can cost workers their lives, that are pitifully low and provide no deterrence. The OSHA Act's provisions for criminal penalties are just as weak. Under the law, criminal prosecutions are limited to those cases where a worker death is a result of a willful violation. Uh, in the case of Jeremy Foster's death, it was a serious violation, not even willful, even though the employer had taken action to modify the equipment intentionally. And so it wasn't even a willful violation, and so there was no possibility of criminal prosecution. Uh, but again, it's only a misdemeanor, and so there are very few criminal prosecutions under the OSHA law. Since 1970, only 71 cases have been prosecuted uh, for uh, criminal provisions under the OSHA law, with a total time in jail of 42 months. During that time, there were 350,000 worker fatalities, but there were only 71 prosecutions. By comparison, under the environmental laws, there is much tougher criminal prosecution. Last year alone, there were 319 criminal enforcement cases uh, initiated by EPA, uh, charging 176 defendants that resulted in 57 years of jail time. That's one year. 
compared to 71 cases in 40 years under the OSHA Act. And as I said, all the environmental laws have been updated by the Congress. And so we would urge that both OSHA and the Congress should act to strengthen enforcement and penalties for job safety law. Uh, the legislation that was enacted last week, the Protecting America's Workers Act, uh, would move and en enhance OSHA penalties, particularly in cases of fatalities, and would enhance penalties, uh, criminal penalties under the OSHA Act. We would encourage the committee to move quickly and act that legislation. Thank you.